What's up everyone? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. My name is Travis. Today's video is part one of possibly two or three of the DIY calc reactor build series and I'm breaking it up into multiple videos because there's a lot of information that I want to give you on how to set one of these up. Not only building it but programming it via the apex also using it in conjunction with a calcium reactor. So I want to cover all of that stuff and I figure if I break it up into two or three videos uh, we'll better uh, receive the information and of course I won't have to rush as much uh, through the videos to get that information out. So with that being said said this is what the calc reactor looks like i will show you everything that you need to do in this video to actually build the reactor and then in the next one we'll be adding it to the 300 and then uh, setting up the programming and then in the third one we'll be doing an update on how i dialed this reactor in with the calcium reactor so uh, let's go ahead and get started now, well, the first thing I did when setting up this reactor is prep the lid. Now, you can see here that there's an input and an output. What I'm going to do is take half-inch threaded adapters, which are half-inch thread to one-fourth uh, push connect for the standard RODI tubing, and I'm going to go ahead and thread those into those fittings, giving me my input, which will go all the way down to the bottom of the reactor, allow it to mix with the calc, and then flow up through the reactor and come out the output. Now, I will be adding a, a check valve to the input just so there isn't any backflow in to the uh, ATO container as well as a ball valve on the output because I am going to dial down the reactor to get a certain drip rate per minute which you guys will see later when setting it up on the 300. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is take another one of these one half inch adapters, put some super glue on it and kind of jam it inside this one half inch uh, coupling that came with the reactor. Now, unfortunately, it's not one half inch. It says it is. It doesn't even fit the one half inch tubing. It's kind of an off brand reactor. So I didn't really expect everything to line up size wise. So I kind of had to make make do with what I have. But uh, with that being said, I ended up cracking the coupling a little bit, but it's nothing a little uh, super glue could not take care of. And uh, the whole purpose of this is to actually um, be attached underneath the lid of the reactor and hold the acrylic tube that will go all the way down to the bottom of the reactor, which will mix with the calc and then kind of flow back up out the reactor. So that's the whole point of this. It's just to simply hold an acrylic tube and uh, it might not be pretty looking, but it definitely works and serves a purpose. All right, now that we're done with the lid, let's go ahead and move on to drilling the reactor. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and line up my maxi jet pump here just to kind of figure out where I want it to be. And uh, we're going to drill the output of the pump first. Now, these are going to be one half inch uniseals. And when it comes to drilling these, you're going to want to use a one and one fourth inch drill bit. Now, I'm going to be using my wood drill bits that I use on pretty much uh, everything that I drill around here. It has the standard uh, drill bit that kind of guides the rest of the bit through the material. And I feel that this is going to be beneficial uh, instead of uh, cutting up the reactor or skipping it around uh, just to simply uh, have that pilot hole and then drill completely through the reactor so if you're going to do this i highly recommend you get these bits because it's going to make it a hell of a lot easier now when it comes to drilling this definitely take your time don't add any unnecessary pressure just let the bits do the work just like drilling our glass aquariums let the bit do the work with just a small amount of pressure uh, on that bit so uh, with that being said it only took about 30 seconds to drill through and we had a nice clean hole ready for our one half inch uniseal all right, now that we have our first hole with our unit seal in it, it's time to move on to working with the MaxiJet 1200 mixing pump. Now, the reason why I only drilled one hole first is because there are several things that I want to do with this pump that I need to make sure that it lines up properly before I drill any holes into the reactor. Because uh, one mistake, it's not going to line up right, and then it's just not going to work overall as a build. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just add a uh, one half inch screw adapter here to the one half inch slip, which will go into the output of the maxi jet. Now that's going to go here on a union, which will then be connected to the tube that goes into that first uniseal. Now this first tube is actually going to be going in and then straight down where it's going to mix with the calc washer. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do here is add a two little fishies ball valve. Now, this is something that I did not see on very many commercial reactors. And uh, the reason why I added it was to have some controllability over the flow of this pump. Now, I'm not really sure how the uh, reactor is going to mix up with the standard flow of that maxi jet because it isn't a very big reactor. So I figured adding this ball valve would allow me to at least dial down the reactor so it doesn't actually uh, spit the calc up into the top of the reactor in turn being sucked back into the pump, causing damage to the pump over time. Time. And it actually worked out great. I turned it down probably a one third the way and uh, still mixes the calc, but not enough where it's going to kind of cause it to be sucked back into the pump. Now, when it came to holding this tube in place, I decided to go with zip ties. Now, I originally bought the clips and I figured it would look cool and it would kind of be stronger than zip ties, but uh, neither of those things happened. It looked too bulky and it just wasn't as snug as the zip ties. So I decided just to use those. 
Now, once the bottom side of the ball valve is done, it's time to go ahead and add the barb fitting for uh, the threaded adapter, which will go to a one half inch T. And uh, I went ahead and did the same thing, cut the tubing to length, added this adapter and connected it with zip ties. Now, when it comes to this T, I'm going to be using a, a threaded on the bottom and then it's going to be slip slip on each side. Now, basically what this does is allows me to connect to this blue fitting here, which connects to the pump. And then it's also going to allow me to go uh, to the left into the reactor and then to the right to a drain port that I'll use when I need to refill the reactor with Kalkwasser. I can simply drain out some of that water and then replace it and then fill it back up. All right, now that we got the majority of the pump completed, I'm going to go ahead and line it up on the reactor and then mark where I'm going to drill for that second unit seal. Now you guys can see why it was so important to go ahead and complete that entire ball valve control flow uh, part of the pump before drilling because it would have been impossible to know exactly where it would have lined up. Now just like the first one, we're going to be using the guided drill bit here, which is one and one fourth inch, and then simply drill through, same process, and then we can add our unit seal. All right, now that we have our unit seals in place, let's go ahead and do the plumbing for the reactor. Now, the first one we're going to do here is the output from the maxi jet. Now, this is going to be the red tubing, which will come directly in from the maxi jet and then straight down to the bottom of the reactor with the 90 degree elbow. Now, what this does is it allows the water to mix with the calc, kind of move it up into the reactor to get all saturated, and then it will in turn fall back down and be ready for the next time it mixes. Now, I do want to apologize for not showing you guys how I installed this first set of PVC. Uh, the reality is I could not get my arm to the bottom of the reactor. I get about halfway and that was it. Something I didn't really think about when I started this process. But uh, either way, I had to wait for Lexi to get home. She held the 90 degree elbow in place and then I finished uh, putting it together. So this is what it looks like when it's completed. Now, once we have the red PVC in place, I'm going to go ahead and cut it to size and add our first union. Now, just a heads up, in this video, you're not going to see me add the second union, but I do add a second one where the blue piping is just to make it easier to add and remove the pump. And that's something I decided to do at the last minute. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and add the blue piping, which is the input for the pump. Now, as you guys can see, it's definitely a struggle to get this tube in there. But if you add some water to the pipe, it will slide in a little bit easier. And uh, understand, guys, it has to be a tight fit because you want it to have enough pressure against the hole of the reactor there to seal it up. All right, now that we have our input and output PVC in place, it's now time to connect the maxi jet to the reactor. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is connect the output union to the red PVC and then connect the maxi jet. Now, as I mentioned before, I added a second union, which you guys will see here in a few minutes, and uh, that is going where the blue PVC is. I did not record that. I just simply did it because I changed my mind during the build process, and that's usually how uh, these builds go. Uh, if you don't really have a, a full plan, you have a general idea of what you want to do, and you just kind of make adjustments as you go. So in turn, I did add a second union just to make it easier for removing the pump when I need to do maintenance. All right, now that our pump is connected, it's time to go ahead and add our drain line. Again, this is something that I didn't see on too many commercial reactors. Some of the higher end ones did have this feature. And uh, what it does is it allows you to uh, drain out enough water so when you add the calc washer, it doesn't spill over the top of the reactor. It also makes it easier for maintenance if you have to remove the pump, all that kind of stuff. You can drain the water uh, down pretty far into the reactor. So what I did is I just went ahead and took a 90 degree elbow, which was slip on one side and threaded on the other, and then added another one of those one half inch to one fourth inch inch adapters which then will connect to a piece of pipe which will then go to a ball valve now i will show you guys exactly how this drain valve works once we get to test filling the reactor at the end of the video all right now that our pump is complete as well as our drain valve it's time to move up to the top of the reactor install our check valve as well as our pvc acrylic tube that will go all the way down to the bottom of the reactor now, one thing about this check valve is it's made for an RODI system. So a standard uh, small end or a lower gallon per hour ATO pump will not cut it. You need to have something that's over 150 gallons per hour. Now, the one that I started with was a 90 gallon per hour. And yes, it did bypass the check valve, but the outflow or the effluent uh, rate that's coming out of the reactor just was not uh, good enough. And uh, if sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't when the pump turned it on and off, there just wasn't enough head pressure to bypass that check valve. Now the check valve is very important because you don't want a calc washer being sucked into your ATO reservoir. So you need to have the check valve. So just remember that when you're buying parts for this, get a pump of at least 150 gallons per hour or more, and you can get past that check valve head pressure. All right, now that our reactor is complete, it's time to go ahead and do a quick test fill. Now this is that 90 gallon per hour pump that I did replace, but I wanted to show you here is the adapter that I made for the 1 4th inch uh, tubing that goes into my ATO reservoir. And as you guys can see here, it's just the fitting that comes with the pump, which was zip tied together to a uh, 1 half inch piece of hose, and then zip tied to a, a 1 half inch to 1 4th inch adapter, and that is where I connect the tubing. 
All right, when it comes to test filling this, I'm going to go ahead and fill up a five gallon bucket with RODI water and then connect all the plumbing and pipes uh, to the reactor. Now, my plan is just to fill it up and let it run for several hours just to make sure that the seals are good, nothing is leaking, all the fittings are good, and uh, just double check the drain and all that kind of stuff to make sure before I get it underneath the 300, uh, there won't be any surprises that I'll wake up to the next day. Now, as I mentioned, I went ahead and swapped out this ATO pump about halfway through filling this reactor up after realizing it just wasn't going to be powerful enough. Now, once the reactor was filled, I did test both pumps, their drip rates, kind of how they worked on and off, and then really went with that 250 gallon per hour pump just because the overall power was much better. And I was able to take advantage of the ball valve to be able to dial down the drip rate, which you guys will see in the next video. Well guys, that's about it for the build process of this reactor. For the remainder of the video, I'm just going to answer a question that you guys had on Instagram. And while I'm doing that, you guys will see me drain the reactor and fill it back up through that port. Now the question you guys had is, why am I using a calc reactor when I already have a calcium reactor on my 300 gallon? Now the main reason is, oh there's actually two reasons. One. I needed a DIY project for this build. Uh, you guys have been asking me to do something. If you remember the 125, that entire system was completely DIY. And uh, for the 300, there's sponsorships and is custom made and there's not really any room for me to get in there and do my own thing. So this was a perfect opportunity to set this up. Now the second reason and the most important reason is I wanna use the calc reactor in conjunction with the calcium reactor to elevate the pH in my tank. Now right now my pH levels are in a totally normal range of 7.8 to 8.1 but I prefer my pH to be at 8.2 to 8.3. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect this to the 300 and use it and dial it in and then you know, alongside with the calcium reactor to get my pH elevated up to those levels or as close to those levels as I can get. And then further adjustments down the road for calcium alkalinity demand uh, on the tank, we're gonna make the adjustments on the calc reactor just to further increase that pH. So stay tuned to the next video when we set this up and get everything on the apex and programmed and ready to go. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because I put a lot of time and effort into these videos. And if you have any questions about this, please let me know via the comment section below. Now stay tuned for part two and possibly three of this build series. And either way, guys, I hope you liked it and I'll see you later. Peace.